Uh, but those rice bros, rice bros, listen up. Can raise your hand, shame yourself by putting a raised hand emoji in chat right now if you would consider yourself a rice bro. I'll wait. I'm gonna take a sip. Ready? Right Put your hands up, rice bros. <laughs> the boss man grab emojis. <laughs> okay, we have a smattering of rice bros in the chat. Uh. Now, you, you you probably have considered shitholes like Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Because, like, if the woman is so poor that you can basically just buy her, that probably, like, tickles your yellow fever just the same, right? But, have you considered South Korea, Rice Bros? Let me, let me pitch South Korea uh, to you. Now, you do have to listen to K-pop, which is a huge detriment, but... Uh, women in South Korea and Japan have it pretty fucking bad. Um, the statistics here show that in almost all countries across the world, the homicide rate for men and women is a 40-60. Women die, are murdered 40% of the time, and almost always by their domestic partners, whereas men are murdered 60% uh, of the time. If there is a murder, there's a 60% chance it's going to be a man. And the motivations for murdering a man are a little bit more varied. However, you may not expect this, but that percentage actually goes down in more conservative countries. And um, the Philippines, uh, it's 20% of murders are women. Uh, 40%. 40% in India. In India, the murder rate for women is still 40-60. So I'm just trying to set this up. Actually, in the U.S., I was wrong. India is 40%, but in the U.S. and the U.K., it's like 23 to 30%. It's probably higher than the U.K. because of the honor killings. But worldwide average is 20%. So I was way off. If a person's murdered, there's like a 1 in 5 chance globally that's going to be a woman. Not in Korea. Not in Korea and not in Japan, where it is the only country. There's three countries in the world where if a murder happens, the victim is more likely to be a woman. And it's almost always by a domestic partner or somebody in their family. And so, you may have heard of this, the 4B movement in Korea. It's been a thing for a while now, but the four no's are no sex with men, no giving birth, no dating men, and no marriage with men. So it's a feminist movement, mostly in South Korea, that is trying to completely and totally remove fraternization between the two genders they are basically boycotting men as a gender and it has gotten a lot of traction in part because of how bad the domestic violence issue is in south korea but also um they want to leave 75 percent of south koreans want to leave their country um and in the younger generation it's uh 80 percent 80% of women want to leave South Korea. If you if you can be not a violent misogynist, you have a chance with 80% of South Korean women right now. If you can just not beat and murder women, <laughs> you have a chance with you, even you, rice burner bro. Gross weirdo rice burner bro in your disheveled apartment. You have a chance with four out of five South Korean women just because you're by default by being a Western man better than almost all South Korean men. Just on your fucking face. Uh, 83% of South Korean women view South Korea as hell. Um, 90% of South Korean women... And the, it's not even a generational gap for this one. 90% of women in South Korea say that they can never make money. It is impossible to go from poor. There is no South Korean dream. You will never become wealthy working in South Korea. Um, and then meanwhile, conversely, and this is also not separated between older and younger, 30% of women and 35% of men, regardless of age, in South Korea consider themselves losers. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, 
they they want to, they want to return to to Kim Jong Un's loving embrace, and the rest of them want to get the fuck out of Korea. So, um, I don't know about Japan, and Japan, of course, has that weird philosophy. I mean, it's not weird; it's kind of it's kind of respectable. Where they're just like, we want to handle our issues privately. I guess I can see the advantages of that. Not make everything like a big public ordeal. Um, but they have a similar murder statistic, so I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of Japanese women are also very unhappy, so I don't know. But as far as the South Koreans are very vocal about it, they hate their lives. <laughs> if you want to, if you are a rice burner the, the, and you're not a retard, you can get a South Korean wife, I think. Um, so, oh, okay, so there's a reaction to this, and the reaction to this is a Discord channel. 20,000 plus Korean men have congregated in Discord to counter protest the four Bs. Uh, Hanam Silik says over 30,000 Korean men gathered on Discord to attack this account. Their goal is to leave malicious comments on articles about female celebrities and target feminist accounts like this one. The group is called New Men Solidarity. My followers have probably heard of it. Yes, this organization formed to advocate for men's rights has a leader accused of domestic violence. He was reported to have consulted with a lawyer about zilling, which I assume just did not get the platform, killing his ex-wife and her family after their divorce. The perpetrator of the convenience store assault case where a man attacked a woman for having a short haircut. Wow, that's weird. I hate tomboy bros. This is what the South Korean men are like. They say they see a short haired woman in Korea. Bam, bam, grow that hair out. What the fuck you doing <laughs> in Korea? Women run feminist accounts. Never reveal our identities. If our identity is exposed, we must prepare for harassment and physical attacks. And this is him. This is the leader of the 30,000 strong South Korean men's dictatorship that is going to gain power. Um, and what exactly are they angry about? Not just the four B's chat, but something is happening in the South Korean government. They're going to pass legislation to ban something very important to men. I mentioned this on my stream many weeks ago that in South Korea, there was a telegram group dedicated to generating AI pornography of classmates, including teenagers. And the South Korean parliament is banning, formally criminalizing, the non-consensual generation of uh, pornography of real people. And that is what has sparked the counter-revolution, the brewing storm on the horizon of South Korea. They need their AI-generated pornography of their own classmates and children. You don't understand. The South Korean bros have it bad. And the feminist, feminazi government of the southern half of the peninsula is just stomping on their cock and balls all day and all night. And they just can't take it anymore. Um, so, that's where we're at. I, I, have, I don't know. The South Korean thing just came out of nowhere. And uh, the more I looked into it, I was like, this is kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> kind of contextualizes American problems a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I hope you found this uh, entertaining. Oh, this is in regards to the South Korean thing. The one thing that I fucking missed was this. Yeah, this is good. A South Korean, the guy, the leader, oh, a Korean man with the name... Koharu Mating Press, which I assume Mating Press is like a porn thing, and Kaharu is this anime girl, uh, has written a declaration of war against Korean women. He is the leader. Oh, he is the leader of the 20,000 plus anti feminist Discord channel coalition. Uh, he seems to be serious. He says that he will revive Operation Barbarossa, uh, which is, of course, a reference to the failed attack of Nazi Germany against the Soviet Union. Uh, as a cyber war against Korean women. He claims to have contacted alt-right groups in Russia, Germany, Austria, Italy, Croatia, Egypt, and Cyprus. In particular, he mentioned making connections with organizations linked to Germany's far-right party, the AFT. Oh my god, not the AFT. They're very serious. Those goose-stepping motherfuckers are trying to bring moderate Islam <laughs> to, to, to Germany. Uh... 
Regardless of whether this is true, he uses things like Declaration of Lore, Blitzkrieg, Protectorate, and Army. And let's read the message. So this is, of course, the Koharu, I think. Uh, and it's called the Declaration of War to Korean Women. It has 7,000 views, 400 likes, and 151 comments when it was screen capped. Uh, hi there. I'm the one who used to take down Korean women, but took a break for a while. After that, I was active under Koharu07, also known as Koharu. Starting today, we officially announce the complete revival of Kotaharu mating press and declare war on Korean women, sharing our plans for future attacks against them. Starting today, our Discord Alliance, formerly the Anti-Feminism Alliance, has officially declared war on Korean feminists, and I'm here to announce that the war will begin within 48 hours. Not really an Operation Barbarossa, if you're going to give them a head start. Uh, we plan to launch a full-scale blitz by sending massive reports to foreign media and will engage in a sincere public opinion campaign through YouTube comments and Naver articles. We will revive the blitzkrieg that the Nazis carried out against the Soviet Union, known as Operation Barbarossa, as a 21st century cyber war. Even if our organization collapses, we will fight this war to prevent the surveillance law on pornography from passing. Additionally, we will target and overwhelm Discord channels where many Korean women are active, active paralyzing them and mass reporting the servers to get them shut down. Even if you see this and try to stop it, we've already been planning this attack for two months. We have infiltrated with hundreds of members. Our great Discord channel is bringing back the holy war against Korean women that heated up in June. We have already made contact with alt-right groups from countries like Russia, Germany, Austria, Croatia, Italy, Egypt, and Cyprus that oppose feminism and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a fucking coalition of anti-feminist countries, bro. Uh, and we've even established partnerships with some of their servers. Oh no, the Discord servers are fully federating. This is a fucking disaster for whammon. Uh, in the case of Germany, we've already completed contact with organizations linked to the far-right party AFD. This sounds like bullshit. Sounds like someone meant to scare people, but not like an actual thing. The, their outrageous behavior and attacks on Korean men have already crossed the line, and we've endured enough. We will leverage our international partnerships to expose your outrageous behavior worldwide, conduct a public opinion campaign to unite Korean men, and launch a full-scale blitz. I know there have been many opinions circulating lately regarding the surveillance law. Our Discord channel will directly intervene in the issue as a, and launch a full-scale campaign. It's already been decided in our leadership meeting. So to all Korean women running Discord servers, if you surrender to me through my DMs <laughs> by October 22nd at 11.25 p.m. specifically, not 11.30, don't get, it, don't get it twisted, I'll withdraw our attack plans and that server will fall under our influence and protection. We're going to launch a blitzkrieg like never before. Our server members living abroad will carry extreme actions using foreign accounts. Commitment to justice and defense of freedom. Long live the Discord Alliance, a refuge for an army for great young men. I think this is it. After, after their Discord servers are spammed and reported, the Korean women will have to submit themselves to Koharu mating presses. Uh, it's it's already decided. Funny. I'm glad to see that autism is basically a universal language. <laughs> it transcends national borders. That's the true one one human one race, the human race is the Spurg. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Nofair. Remember to like and subscribe.